It's Louisiana Derby week at fairgrounds and Louisiana Derby day means an all stakes pick five that not only includes the second 100 point derby prep first here in the States, but the return of champion Echo Zulu and the Twin Spires Oaks, Horse Racing Nation presenting the Munez Memorial, the New Orleans Stakes with Olympiad and a nifty little turf stakes for Philly and Mares to kick it all off. I'm Ed DeRosa, she's Sarah Albadwi, and hopefully we can find five winners hopefully. in a row. It seems like we're not going to be finding them together if we do no. find them, but maybe somebody will uh, put our brains together and find something intelligent to put together for this all stakes pick five that does kick off with a turf route for fillies and mares, four-year-olds and up in the Tom Benson Memorial Stakes. How cool is it before we dive in though that we get to present a race? It's awesome. From Horse Racing Nation. And Candace, uh, she tweeted the other day when the, uh, the saddle towel was out, uh, seeing our logo in a graded stakes race. I think it's awesome. And it's a great opportunity to partner with the track and show what we can do media wise and hopefully uh, help the handle a little bit, help players win as well, which is the point of this. And I think we saw firsthand how the information can be used there. Obviously you and I both want to put together winning tickets for ourselves, but for those watching, it's not necessarily about having to copy all of our opinions but maybe something catches your ear that you hadn't thought of before. You use that horse when you wouldn't have, or maybe we talk you off using a horse and you're able to cut, save elsewhere just makes for a better experience. Absolutely. And I think while there are going to always be people that copy and paste our tickets, the ones that kind of can already have an idea of what's going on in the sequence, maybe you're a more experienced horse player and you listen to this for five seconds and you hear something about a horse and you're like, ooh, maybe I'll throw that one in there. Or, oh, maybe I want to take this one out. Just like you said, could be the difference between a winning ticket score. And I did have that happen with someone just last week with the Santa Anita mandatory payout. Somebody used a horse that I liked in the first leg and they won for over $26,000. Very Pretty nice hit. Stuff. Yeah, not, you would have liked to have won yourself. Of course. But. I mean, we both like to make money as well. <laughs> We're not just doing this just for fun, although it is a lot of fun. But if we can provide anything of value at all, I feel like that's also a win to me. I agree. And one of the things I think is of value before we get into the specific races of the sequence, if you will, uh, I like looking at how horsemen do on specifically the big day. So. Florida Derby Day, Kentucky Derby Day, Belmont Stakes Day, Breeders' Cup Day. I kind of see it as their own, it's not a meet per se, but it, it's to me a unique part of the calendar for each racetrack. And Louisiana Derby Day at Fairgrounds fits that mold for me as well. So what you're looking at here is the last five years, so 2017 through 2021, trainers on Louisiana Derby Day at fairgrounds only. And one of the things that sticks out right off the rip, two things, they're one, two. Steve Asmussen, three for 42. Brad Cox, 10 for 35. Clearly one uh, has come with more success on Louisiana Derby Day than the other. And I find that particularly germane because Steve Asmussen is gonna have a double in the Oaks Derby that it's going to have a will pay of probably $3.80 with Echo Zulu and Epicenter. And I approached this sequence where at least one of them has to get beat when I play my final tickets. And I think that's a fair approach to have. You want to beat the chalk in certain races to find value in certain spots. Um, in my ticket, I have a little bit of a different approach. I'm looking for value in some of the other races rather than the uh, preps for the Kentucky Oaks and the Derby. But there will be a couple other horses on my ticket and some attempts to beat them and ones that I want to talk about as well because nobody needs to tell you that Echo Zulu and <laughs> Epicenter are good horses yes. and possibly likely winners of those two races. So. Very, very likely indeed. I would say Echo Zulu more likely, just a shorter field to beat and she is the champ. Uh, but before we get there, let's start it off with the Benson. You mentioned that older Phillies and Mares mile in the 16th on the turf. And this is actually where I'm going to take my biggest stand and not necessarily a big stand in terms of the price I expect Hendy Woods to be. But when looking through the sequence, I expect her to be the least likely single horse of the favorites. So you have the Chad Brown trainees in the Munez. I think either one could be singled on some tickets. Maybe people just say, well, I'll take both Chads. 
uh, Olympiad, of course, Echo Zulu and Epicenter. All of those are going to be singled, I think, far more than Hendy Wood. So even though I am on the favorite, I do think there is some zigging by leaning on her and her alone in the Benson. She's my pick. She's won off the layoff before. She gets Tyler Gaffleyone, who has the most wins aboard her. A little concerned with Mark's numbers on big days at fairgrounds, trainer Mark Cassie, uh, but I do think she's the best of the group, and I think that's a spot to, to lean where others won't. I think that's fair. She is my top pick in here as well. Uh, morning line, five to two on her. Uh, his numbers off the layoff aren't exactly standout numbers, but it's not like they're exceptionally bad either. I think he's, what, 15%? Yeah, 15% off 61 to 180 day layoffs. And she does make a lot of sense in here, but I am looking at a couple of others. This is kind of my biggest spread race of the sequence. I'm gonna okay. be using four horses in here. So I'll use her, but I'm also using the number four, Gam's Mission, a four-year-old filly ridden by Adam Biscitza for trainer Cherie DeVoe. I'm also gonna be using the number one, Lake Lucerne, five-year-old mayor for Joel Rosario and Brendan Walsh. And then I'm also gonna be using the three, I Hear You mm. with Ray Luke Gutierrez and the other Walsh trainee in here. And a little bit about them. Yam's mission, she won three races in a row if you go back to last year. And then she stepped up to face some graded stakes company like the likes of Santa Barbara and Con Lima. And you can't really fault her for not exactly performing up to snuff versus mm -hmm. the two of them, since those are both fillies that were extremely successful on the turf. And then she is away from August to November, comes back in the winter memory stakes at Aqueduct. And that was a pretty bad stumble at the start. She fell to her knees in there. And she was the only one closing any ground in there from the back of the pack. Now she's off a little bit of a layoff again, but I think that that last race was actually pretty impressive. And she has a shot in here as well. And then another one coming off a layoff is Lake Lucerne. She was last seen on the Tapita up at Woodbine in the grade three Maple Leaf Stakes. I think the turf is definitely her preferred surface. She does already have a win over Clara Peters, who is in here as well, going first off the claim for trainer Chris Hartman this time. And I think that she has tactical speed, which could be to her advantage. And then just to quickly touch on I Hear You, who is another horse that I'm using in here. Her last race, kind of a bobble at the start, didn't break quite as well. Uh, and then I also think that her forward motion was sort of impeded, if you watch the replay in there, which... I know you haven't, but I will show it in this video. Um, she is kind of impeded by past the plate in there, who is racing a little bit erratically in the stretch. And I think some of her forward motion was not quite as fluid as it could have been. I think with a better trip in this race, she could also have a shot at a bit of a price, 12 to 1 on the morning line. That'd be a good way to start a pick five. It would be. 26 bucks, give or take. <laughs> All right, so you are one, three, four, six. Mm -hmm. I am six alone. That's my single uh, spread everywhere else. But that's it for me on the favorites. I'm, I'm really going for it here. Uh, and that includes, uh, I'm sure I'll, well, I'll know where I stand if Hendy Woods wins or not. But turning the page to the New Orleans Stakes, Olympiad, I think will be the second shortest price in the sequence. Echo Zulu, I'm assuming, will be one to five. Olympiad, I'm thinking maybe one to two or three to five. Most likely winner, so it is a gamble for me, but I thought both Proxy and Chess Chief, if anyone is able to run with Olympiad early, maybe one of those could be the one running late to spring the mild upset, so upset in the case of Proxy, probably a little bigger upset with Chess Chief at the eight to one morning line price. But Proxy did take a big step forward looking at the Ragazin and Sheets, the uh, four-year-old debut faster horse than he was at three and he had a lot of buzz on him around him at three and i kind of thought okay where's the beef we never got served i think we're ready for a ribeye on saturday <laughs> wouldn't that be nice you'll be there so you get I'll to try there. all of the wonderful fairgrounds <laughs> foods and uh maybe you'll bring something back um proxy does interest me a little bit he is going to be on my ticket alongside the likely winner in olympiad because as you said, a lot of buzz about him last year. He was on the Kentucky Derby Trail. He was facing the likes of Midnight Bourbon, yes. Mandaloon, Hot Rod <laughs> Charlie, and not embarrassing himself either. He was second or third or fourth in some of these graded stakes preps for the Derby, then ends up going on the sideline. You can probably make an excuse for him in the grade three Lexington too, that he didn't necessarily appreciate the sloppy surface. So coming back, he had a really impressive performance last time out. And I think that he's got a shot in here. Yeah. He takes another step forward, but. And he gets four pounds from Olympia. Oh, you love the weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, watch out for that. So you're two five. I am. No chest chief. 
No, I, I think it's an interesting point to bring up that five of his career wins, in fact, all of them, all five of them <laughs> have come at fairgrounds. Right. So if there's ever a time to play him at a decent price, it could be in here. But I just think they're yeah. going to work a little better. I'm definitely a, a little nervous about the pace situation with Olympia, given how he won uh, at fairgrounds last out at even money. It's going to be a little shorter price now, so okay, you can take a, a chance, which I am with Proxy. But if the others know the only possible way they win is to try to run with them, maybe I get the right setup with Chess Chief. But overall, definitely prefer Proxy. He's my top pick. I like it. All right. So on to the Munez Memorial Stakes presented by Horse Racing Nation. Very proud to be involved in what I feel is maybe the more, most wide open race of the sequence. I think it'll have, uh, Chad's horse probably will be a little lighter price than Hendy Woods, but I'm not sure that many people are gonna be singling her, especially when the other Chad is such a potent angle. We saw it work at Tampa Bay Downs on their derby day. I'm gonna try to beat though, and I thought uh, Sant Santin, Santine, I'm not sure. The nine. It's a good thing I've about it, racing. I've heard it both ways. So uh, another, I don't think you're wrong. another horse second off the layoff, similar to Proxy, uh, seems to be an, an angle I've gravitated toward on this day, but uh, was six wide in that race. And uh, I definitely think could take a, a step forward uh, in the second back in the season. And you do get Tyler Gaffleone back in the saddle. I definitely like when jockeys return, when they rode him off the layoff, come right back. It was a wide trip. I'm sure he learned something that day. Uh, not a huge price on the morning line, but I, I think if you're able to beat the two Chads, you're doing okay. Absolutely. And I think that having a lightly raced horse, you have so many opportunities for them to improve. You can make some excuses for his effort last time out. And I think that he's going to be one that a lot of others gravitate to if you're trying to beat the two Chads. But the one that I'm going to try to beat the two Chads with is going to be number four cavalry charge. This is a five-year-old gilding going out for Brian Hernandez Jr. and Dallas Stort. Or uh, Dallas Stort. <laughs> Excuse me, Dal. Dal. <laughs> Dal, that could be a fun nickname. That's a good nickname. <laughs> anyway, he's 10 to 1 on the morning line. I did include him in a pick five that I played last um, time he was seen when he was 35 to 1 and the one horse. Unfortunately, the rest of that ticket did not hit, but that would have been pretty exciting. But I don't think that that effort was a complete fluke because if you go back – to a couple of starts ago, he was running pretty competitively. He was winning at um, Kentucky Downs and Keeneland. I think that he has shown that he can already be ahead of a lot of the other speed in here, like two Emmys, like 40 under. You're getting a lot of the same cast of characters again in this field. And the ones that are new faces to this group, like Sacred Life, Devamani, and Another Mystery, they're all closers. So maybe he has the opportunity for a repeat performance of what he did last time of just going to the front. If he's going to already be in front of a lot of these other horses, we know that he can last the distance. So why not again? Yeah, no, it's, it's on my ticket as well. Uh, it's, it's a B, but at this point, you're beating the favorites and tough to split hair. So on my ticket as well, and I don't disagree. He's an so interesting who's, character. who's yours in this race? The four cavalry charges, my top oh. pick. I am going to also use the two chads because I think oh, that okay. they have they have their excuses for the last sure. amount. And I think that we've seen a lot of Chad's Brown, Chad Brown's horses close into slower paces, especially on the Naira circuit. So yeah. it's not like they're incapable of doing so. And they might end up just being better horses than some in this field. So you're two, four, eight? Two, three, four. Oh, two, three, four. Sorry. That's my bad. I'm four, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to try to beat the Chads. Uh, that brings us to the Twin Spires Fairgrounds Oaks and a celebrity sighting in here with undefeated champion two-year-old Philly Echo Zulu making her three-year-old debut. She is triple crown nominated, uh, I would say out of time for the Kentucky Derby, but we have seen Steve Asmussen, although via private purchase, but he has won the Preakness with an Oaks winner. So kind of interesting that she is nominated. Uh, they get her ready for this. It's been a very productive race on the Oaks Trail through the years. Absolutely the one to beat. At one to five, though, I do think if you're going to take your shot, now's it. Because if she gets beat, the sh she won't be a short price again. I mean, she might be favored again. But like at one to five, this is the, the time to try. Well, she is three to five. Not saying she won't go off at one to five, but morning line, she is three to five. <laughs> I'm would, sure she will go off. I would bet her to win price. at three to five. Wow. 
Wow. So okay. I'm banking on one to five or less. Uh, I, I, short I, field, I, hidden connection, I have some, I have a lot of respect for. I, m I mean, she was one of my bigger bets last year. You were there, I believe, yes, Churchill Downs, yeah. um, before we knew each other. But Ray Lou, huge fan, going to talk about him in a little bit with the Louisiana Derby. Uh, but, you know, her is sort of the alternative. I have her on the ticket because I feel like if Echo Zulu loses, don't want to get beat by Hidden Connection. I actually prefer uh, Turner loose in favor, though. Uh, favor, I think, gets uh, a boost from the distance. One turn mile at Gulfstream. I think the two turns here in the long stretch benefits her here if Echo Zulu doesn't fire. And then Turner loose uh, is one of the few I think can actually stay close uh, to the pace going this route. And the Dirt debut last time spectacular maybe overselling it a little bit but the fact that this brad cox trainee shows up on dirt runs as well as she did at 17 to 1 is insane to me but the numbers stack up and i think she's worth a, a shot at four or five times the price as the chalk right and i think you know there's only one other horse in here that like i really have a good feeling on uh, and that's the four Berna breezy this is a horse that i liked two starts back and I just love the visually impressive closing kick that we've seen from her. She'll have to get a lot faster figures wise in order to compete with the likes of Echo Zulu and some others in here. But I think that, you know, taking a little bit of a class relief with her out of the silver, silver bullet day and putting her against Allowance Optional Claiming Company, a race that Sequest was third in, where she did display the same sort of come out in the stretch and wider move and then close down the length of the stretch pretty impressively. I think that maybe, maybe if somebody goes with Echo Zulu early, she gets a setup to do the same. Not that Echo Zulu is going to be coming back to her, <laughs> but the running style, I would take a shot with her versus... Anybody else in here? Hidden Connection to me, the last couple of efforts have been kind of disappointing yeah. as far as what we thought of her when we saw her that day in the Pocahontas that was. Yes. Yes. That was a very impressive race. The Breeders' Cup, you could make some excuses, but then coming back, she was actually a single that I used in that pick five on that day that Turner Loose won. What happened? <laughs> You know, I don't have an excuse for her. You could say maybe post 11, but she seemed to be traveling fine, was in range, got the lead at one point, and then just backed out of there. So I want to see it again from her. I want to see it again from Turner Loose. I would use Berna Breezy in here as the potential one to upset Echo Zulu if anybody can. All right. So this is definitely our diversion. Uh, I'm sure in some situations I'll allow myself where Echo Zulu can win and none of the other three favorites could win. I think maybe there's still be some opportunity there. So maybe that's how we end up both hitting. But yeah, I, mean, I don't. I didn't have the four listed at all. Two, three, six on the uh, the ticket that singles Hendy Woods. And with Hidden Connection, I will say I, I heard some whispers that I don't know if she missed a work or one of them wasn't great and they sort of had to rush her to get the debut in because they wanted to have this progression to the Oaks and felt like it was still worth having a race under her versus missing a race. If you believe that, then I would definitely expect an improvement here. But the reality is she hasn't come close to running back to her debut at Colonial Downs, which was a sprint. So now we're, you know, you're kind of getting into, okay, is that more her style anyway? Um, you know, at it, it eight to one, if she wins, I'd be kicking myself for not pressing her. But if she's the three to one second choice, then just, I'm willing to get beat. Right. And I think exactly like I'm waiting to see her kind of show up again and then I'll be back on the bandwagon. Of course, it'll be too late. Otherwise, right. <laughs> but I don't trust her anymore. Yeah, um, fair enough. Moving on to the last one. The feature million dollars, right? Million bucks. million bucks, 100 points to the winner on the Derby Trail, and uh, we're dubious of the Ray Lou, Brett Calhoun team in the Oaks with Hidden Connection. I'm actually very interested in them here in the Louisiana Derby with Kapuna, uh, but before we get to him and the rest, uh, this is a mile and 3 sixteenths race, which I mentioned not only because it's good to know that, but also because pedigree, in my mind, definitely coming into play once you get to nine furlongs and then, of course, beyond. 10 furlongs the derby distance. This is the Preakness distance. And to me, it makes a difference, or at least it's good to be aware of the pedigree. And we took a look at the sires of each of the entrants in the Louisiana Derby and what they have done going nine to 10 furlongs. Now this is over both surfaces because I felt like 
just getting a sense of the distance uh, that didn't matter as much. And I wanted some sample with the horses who haven't run as much like the not this time strong mandate connect. Uh, this is his first crop. So we don't have a lot to go on there, but I thought pretty even other than midnight loot, which surprised me a little bit since he was a champion sprinter, although his sire was a dual classic winner and medallia Doro. Uh, they're 16 and 17 percent, but everyone else kind of middle of the road. Munnings, yeah, okay, maybe known as a sprinter, strong mandate, not really a big sample size anyway. So, admittedly, when I looked at this, I thought, well, there's really no one to upgrade or downgrade. Um, they're all either going to do it or not. No one in here, I would say, oh, this sire, they've been just been begging for a mile and three sixteenths. That's not the case. So, uh, interesting stats, but in the end, there's really not much I'm doing with it. If I'm being honest. Yeah, I would say, oh, like maybe you want to toss rattle and roll, but off of a sample size of two, you absolutely yeah. don't. I want to toss him anyway. For other uh, reasons. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I agree. Outside post and just, I haven't been wild about the way Mc, the McPeaks have been going, three-year-old. I mean, they came in with a lot of buzz and we still have the uh, the run smile happy. Smile happy. Yeah. Um, I would definitely say that's his better chance than rattle and roll. So we'll see. But yeah, from the outside post is what the co second choice, co third choice behind Pioneer of Medina. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think rattle and roll is definitely one of the uh, likely underlays of the group, even more so than Epicenter, I would say. But Kapuna, I do like. Brett Calhoun's won this race uh, with similar fashion he did with By My Standards. I think Ray Lou Gutierrez, uh, even though. I talk about him a lot, and he has the gif on social media that people love. I don't think he's getting bet nearly as much as his talent would indicate, so I think we're going to get the right price here. Kapuna, definitely a horse I'm excited to hopefully be live with in the pick bot. I like it. Might have talked me onto that one, which is a horse that I didn't really look at at all. Um, obviously, we both know the talents of Epicenter, so I'll talk about somebody else in here. That is the number two, Zozos, who is jumping onto the derby scene for Florent Drew and Brad Cox, a trainer that we talked about coming in loaded for Louisiana Derby Day, like the graph that we showed, and I'll show it again briefly mm -hmm. just to uh, refresh your memory on his capabilities on Louisiana Derby Day at the fairgrounds winning at 29% over the last five years. Five years. Five yeah. years, pretty impressive stuff. So he knows what he's doing when he's gearing up for days like this. This horse kind of, you know, just showed up on the scene after his maiden breaking score and then stretching out for the first time and running away pretty impressively in there from Barossa, who was a pretty well thought of horse. Uh, I like that he is eight to one on the morning line coming in undefeated. Obviously this is a big step up, but I think that he's shown that he can professionally rate off of another horse. He doesn't need the lead. He shows early interest and he could be the one stalking epicenter. If he epicenter gets away with an easy lead again, I like his chances in here. I don't think anybody's really fully wowed me more so than him other than epicenter. So if I'm going to take a shot against epicenter with somebody, it's going to be the two Zozos. So two six for you. Two six. Two six. All right, and I am two three five seven nine, which is basically just if I get to this point and I'm beating up a center, I want any of any of them with a chance. I mean, silent power, famous last words, but would be one of the bigger shocks of my lifetime. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it with that one. Um, you never know, but <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Fifty but. to one's an underlay, though. That's uh, <laughs> maybe the best way to put it. So uh, we'll summarize our tickets. I think you're uh, going to put those in post. I will absolutely uh, go through it right now for you. In race number eight, I'm using the one, three, four, six. Race number nine, that'll be two, five. Race ten, two, three, four. Race 11, 1, 4, and race 12, 2, 6 for a total of $48 for the 50 cent base wager. All stakes pick five. Who have you got? I have the uh, six to kick things off, Hendy Woods. Then I'm 5, 6 with 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, with 2, 3, 6, with 2, 3, 5, 7, 9. That's a $60 ticket. And I am very confident because uh, in all the races I spread, I do not have the morning line favorite in any of them, that if that hits, it would pay more than a $60 win bet would pay on Hendy Woods. I like it. So that's Are you buying some pizza the, when your ticket hits? I think that could be a pizza ticket. I think it could be. Yeah. That could be the one. 10 grand. Uh, the, the fields are a little on the 
short side overall. But, I mean, if you're beating four favorites, you, you know you're launched. So just a matter of uh, having to get lucky because uh, by no means do I think any of them are tosses. But I just want to put together what I feel is uh, the best ticket to give my san- champ- self a chance at a score and do like some it. pizza. I like it. I'm here for some pizza for yeah, me. Free pizza. I don't think my ticket would be hitting for uh, pizza. No, that's uh, it depends. Yeah, I mean, you have less pizza options, I would say. I would say, yes. Favorites involved, but it's not impossible. No. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, that's a wrap. <laughs> that's a wrap <laughs> on the All Stakes Pick Five at Fairgrounds. Make sure you head over to picks.horseracingnation.com for any extra fun information to help you catch some winning tickets at the fairgrounds on Saturday.